Maple Systems thanks you for joining us. I will be covering every step in depth so by the end of this video, you will be able to make an Arduino Speak Modbus protocol. The materials required in order to do this will be an Arduino, an RS-485 shielder adapter, a serial communication adapter, and any HMI capable of an RS-485 connection. In my demonstration, I will be using an Arduino Redboard paired with a CMT3072XH. For establishing a connection between the Arduino and the HMI, I will break it down into three sections. First is downloading the Modbus libraries and creating the Arduino's code. Second is the wiring of the Arduino and RS-485 connection. And finally, we are going to be setting up the HMI's Easy Builder Pro project. For the sake of time, I will not explain how to download and use the Arduino's platform, but I will link all my code in the description. However, before you are able to use my code, you will need to download and install the Arduino Modbus library. This library implements many great commands for communicating with the HMI. I kept my code fairly simple for today's purposes, but in future videos, we can cover more advanced concepts that allow us to read string data from our HMI. At first glance, it may be a lot to take in, but I will try my best to break it down. Anything circled in yellow is the bare minimum required to establish a connection with the HMI. However, we need to tell the code what registers to read data from on the HMI. Anything circled in red is used for addressing bits on the Arduino. This code is declaring our red LAD to pin 12, our yellow LAD to pin 11, and our green LAD to pin 10. Our blue block is declaring bits from our HMI. It will read 0x1, 0x2, and 0x3. Finally, this big function block down here is going to read the values of the specified bits on our HMI and translate the true or false response as an on or off for the respective LAD. So when bit 1 is set to true, our red LAD, which is connected to pin 12, will turn on. This diagram should help you with wiring the LAD onto the Arduino. You can either pause the video here or open the folder in the description with schematics to our project. Now that we have uploaded the code to the Arduino and wired the LADs, we will need to connect the HMI to the Arduino through an RS-485 connection. To wire the RS-485 connection, you will need to purchase an RS-485 shield or adapter. Mine looks like this and has seven wires coming out of it. The left side connects to the Arduino and the right side will connect with the HMI. Starting with the Arduino side, we have four wires, yellow, orange, red, and brown. Yellow will connect to our five volt power. Orange will connect to pin zero on the Arduino. Red will connect to pin one on the Arduino, and brown will be our ground wire. Once again, you can follow our diagram to see how it works. On the HMI side, we have three wires, black, blue, and white. Black will be our ground wire. Blue will represent the B minus wire and white will represent the A plus wire. To connect these pins to our HMI, I will be using a serial communication adapter. This adapter allows me to specify how each individual pin is connected. For you, these pins may be different depending on your HMI. On our website, locate the CMT3072XH installation guide. You can find tons of useful information about your HMI model. However, we are only interested in the three charts at the bottom. I am looking for a two-pin RS-485 connection guide, and I found it in the first column of the COM2 chart. In this instance, data minus will represent B minus and data plus will represent A plus. With this knowledge, I know the blue wire will connect to pin one and the white wire will connect to pin two. This chart also tells us that the ground wire can be found in the fifth slot for every serial connection. Reviewing everything thus far, this is what the code looks like that we've uploaded to the Arduino, while the wiring of our Arduino and RS-485 connection should look something like this. Now all that's left is to complete our Easy Builder Pro project so that our HMI can communicate with the Arduino. On a fresh Easy Builder Pro project, we want to add our Arduino as a Modbus slave. We can do this by selecting system parameters and choosing new device on the devices tab. On this page, I will need to configure the device settings to allow for the RS-485 connection. For device, I'm going to select the Modbus RTU, URTU over TCP. 
For interface, I'm going to select RS485-2 wire. Under the COM settings, I'm going to select COM2 for common. I'm setting the baud rate to 9600. This matches our code from earlier. Data bits will be set to 8, parity will be set to even, and stop bits will be set to 1 bit. At this point, feel free to pause the video and copy down the settings from here. Moving forward with the project, we know from our Arduino code that the only registers currently being read are going to be 0x1, 0x2, and 0x3. I will be setting down a simple toggle switch and bit lamp for each of these bits. However, I encourage you to get creative with your projects and try to control the bits with a different object. We have macros, event logs, and combo buttons just to name a few. Now that all the toggle switches are set up, we can upload this to the HMI and watch it work. But before I can do that, I want to color code my toggle switches to allow me to know what LED each switch controls. For the sake of time and clarity, I will be speeding up the process of me coloring all the switches. Now that the project is complete, there's only one thing left to do. Test it. Moving over to my test bench, you can see the HMI up top and the LEDs down below. I'm controlling the HMI screen from VNC Viewer, and you can see how responsive the Arduino is every time I change a bit. So we have successfully shown that you can read bits from the HMI and I would like to build onto our Easy Builder Pro project and add a stack lamp. I can do this by utilizing our picture libraries. You can find the picture library by navigating to the project tab on Easy Builder Pro and selecting pictures. From here you can select a library and download the pictures you want on your project. In this case, I wanted the stack lamp, so I'm going to select it and click Add to Project. I can now place this as a word lamp and configure it to my toggle switches. Let's go to the test bench and see how it looks. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for watching.